down from the other side. So the point of using a smart cast is that you can be mobile and just pass by the smart cast when you need to use it to send a secure message. So you don't have to uh, connect the location from where the message is sent to your own home or your home connection. There are many kinds of usage areas for this project. Uh, everything from uh, causing mischief on the internet by using it as drones in a simple botnet for deducing, or uh, you could use it for sending secure messages, or for uh, like a simple drop box like they used back in the Cold War when uh, the spies used to a common uh, box in the middle of the city to drop messages that uh, each one of them would pick up afterwards. So you cannot connect the, the location of the box to the actual spies and their home locations. The story behind the name is not uh, completely known to me, but uh, <coughs> the likeness is to uh, the kind of black boxes that you find in flights, which contain information uh, about what happened during the flight. And then it it's called throw because it's something you throw aw away from yourself and you put in another, uh, another location. There are also a couple of alternative names of this project, which is the kamikaze box. It's called that way because if you place it in another location, like in a, you hide it in a closet in a corporate headquarters or in a school, it might get put in. Possible to get it back or to, to go through actually repair it locally. And in Swedish, Sweden is called Svartkast. There's also a similarity to the old school freaker prank or activism method that some of you might uh, remember from the late 80s to the 90s. Um, the method of Svartfax was it took a few black papers, like three black papers, normal office size, A4, and it put them together like in a long stream and taped each end of the paper to each other so you get a, a long paper instead of a short one. You insert the paper into the fax machine and dial the number that you want to put out of the service. You put the fax half halfway through the machine so the paper gets stuck and you unplug the machine so the paper still stays there when you put it on again. Then you resend the fax and you put the, the papers back together and you tape it so it forms a cylinder or a page loop instead. That way the fax will continue to send more and more pages all the time until the ink run out, runs out on the receiving end or someone unplugs the fax or cancels the message. Um, as a counterattack, you could just put the number repeat or put 999 copies of the fax in a queue so it would continue to send to that fax machine every time you turn it on again. It was pretty popular in activist movements during the late 80s and the 90s and a lot of people used it as pranks too. So one of the first usage areas that comes to mind for a lot of people when I mention this is that it will probably be used to cause mischief and just fuck with people and uh, DDoS them and uh, do storage uh, for bad stuff, illegal stuff. But the thing is that it can also be used in a political sense in areas in the world that, that the people are oppressed and there is no free speech and the internet is monitored. We have seen this in Iran and China and Burma, and that it's uh, most likely impossible for those people to actually have a kind of free communication with people outside of the country because the governments are monitoring the internet all the time. In China, they have firewalls where people sit and manually look through the logs and accept or deny certain pages that are on the blacklist. So there, there, there's a usage area for those people to use a box like this, either to pass messages on to themselves and not use their own home connections to build a sort of a sociogram, and you can also use this box to send messages outside of the internet. If the box gets taken down, you can always put up another one, but you can never reveal your identity just by looking at the box. The thing is to put these black throws in strategic places around a city, for example, because you can build up a mesh network between the black throws and have your own version of a sort of a darknet privately just used for secure communication or for distributed storage of things that are questionable by the government, like blogs or WikiLeaks type of documents that uh, just have to be somewhere until it can get leaked and we wait for the right time. There's quite a lot of stuff you can put on these boxes and uh, not only use them to, to do evil stuff. And there are probably a 
lot of different ways to connect to these machines and actually use them, but I see two main, uh, main methods of operation. And one of them is to set up a double Wi-Fi network, so you use one, one interface to connect through an existing access point nearby, so you can utilize their internet connection. And the other Wi-Fi interface you can use for passing users that need to temporarily use this, this podcast while on a bus or riding by by a bike or just walking through or sitting in a park nearby. You can just access this hidden SSID or something and send a message and log off and walk away from there. I can never never really pinpoint a person that passes by that area. It's, a, it's crowded. You can put it in a park or uh, hide it out of the street, uh, those manholes or something. It's um, it's either the temporary version, or you can use it from home by using reverse connections uh, in by anonymity layers like uh, Tor. So how to build these machines? You can of course use any machine at all that can run Linux, because you probably use Linux to configure the network correctly and use the anonymity services like I2P and Tor, and also have the the confidence of using SSH for remote management of the machine, remote administration. I guess you could use a Windows machine too, but I think the footprint will be larger. We need a power, more powerful computer, and Linux runs on embedded devices as well, and the mini PCs, like the single board devices. So it's a good choice. One of the most important things when building this stuff, and you want to try it out, is make sure that the machine cannot be traced back to you. Because if you put it, if you use it for purposes that the government might not, might not like, and in uh, those kind of countries that I have meant before, which there are opposing forces that get oppressed by the government, there's a possibility that you could get put in jail as a prisoner just by opposing the government. So I have to make sure that you don't use a hard drive, which I've used yourself before, and put documents and information that could be traced back to you. So you could buy a new hard drive or use wiping tools correctly to wipe your entire drive. Because if, if someone finds the machine and know what you did with it, they would probably know want to know what is on the machine as well. And check the logs and try to map out like a sociogram or just put those people in a more targeted surveillance. So the, another one of the most important things, besides removing the data from the machine, is to clean it up for fingerprints, and remove markings and stickers that can be traced back either to you or your your cool hacker handle or a channel name, or uh, if you get it from a company by dumpster diving or search engineering or something, you could always find these kind of insurance marks on the machines. They have a wrist, wristed them in with knives or something and put red uh, paint on it because it's gonna be, get hard to remove. So you could use sandpaper or a file or something just to wipe that thing off the machine. It works on most plastic pieces. Also you can use soap and water to remove the fingerprints on them or you can use an ammonium solvent but never use the solvent on a LCD screen because it will fuck the screen. Also use RAM disks or memory disks as much as possible so that there's nothing vital to the communication or the information that passes by if someone should capture a machine. We can load, boot up a minimal system by, on the hardware or something, but storage or the log directory should definitely be put in a RAM disk so it gets wiped as soon as someone cuts the power on it. This is, of course, to protect the users on it. So if someone's infiltrating this machine or coming, accessing from the outside and manages to get an account in the machine somehow, they could probably sit there and listen to see which people passes by, make sociograms of them, analyze the kind of data that passes through, when it does. And in the worst case scenario, they probably catch the people using it too. 